Joining us now is OG Nika, OG Ukwe, with stories trending around the world. Hello, Junix. How was your week Good weekend? Good morning, Dr. Yeah, Abati. How are you? Well. Perfect. Yes. All right. Good morning, Ayo. Morning, Oji. How are you this morning? Very good. Rufai. Morning, Oji. Welcome back. Thank you. Show Akpa. Yeah. Right. Push it. Push Don't it. worry. You. You'll be all right. Yes, sir. Well, yes, all right. Sir. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Over the weekend, governors elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party advise the Governing All Progressives Congress under the leadership of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to throw in the towel if they have no solution to the economic hardship in the country. The PDP Governors Forum specifically noted that the hardship and suffering being faced by Nigerians has no tribal, religious, or party coloration, stressing that a hungry man is an angry man. Well, in the meantime, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesam Wike, while speaking about his readiness for the 2027 elections during a Thanksgiving service in River State on Sunday, canvassed support for President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's economic reform policies, saying that it won't be easy to turn the fortunes of the nation around in a short time frame. The minister, who is also said to be a member of the People's Democratic Party, also stated that with the alliances his political camp has formed, the 2027 elections will be a walk in the park. The decision of Mr. President is what, if we are patient at the end of the day, we will get to where we want to get to. It cannot be easy that way. That you want to bring a policy that something that has worked for years, within six months, you have uh, changed it. Even if it is a miracle, it is difficult. It is difficult. What we require is give him support. I believe in the Renew Hope agenda. I seriously believe in the Renew Hope agenda. I will not do anything to continue to support Mr. President. I can tell you, with the forces we have, I don't know of anybody who will challenge us. I don't know of anybody who will challenge us. I can tell you, it, it's, it's like, it's like, tomorrow is 2027. It's like to go to So all these people will come and will just rest. For me, it's been very far. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. The two leadership of the party now, yeah. NBC is here. PDP is here. Where can you find that unity? Which state? It's only in reverse. I can find that unity. Well, all right, let me uh, take a reaction to his reference about, you know, the elections that may happen in River State in 2027. Well, this person wrote, who is Wike referring to as us? Does it mean PDAPC, PDP, <laughs> or APC? <laughs> Though not surprised, it is evident that when Wike claimed he was fighting for the interests of Rivers people, he lied. It was always his interest. He used the people of Rivers to elevate himself. Well, a lot of people have also said that, I mean, is this, this idea of politicians going into our sanctuary, mm -hmm. our religious places like, you know, the church or mosque to make such, you know, statements. Should, people should refrain from talking about these types of things in, um, you know, in a religious center. I don't know what your thoughts are on mm -hmm. that as well. Um, yeah, let me ask you before I take this one. That's in the religious center. Yes. I mean, I've always, there's always been that argument yeah. around should the church be, church be separate from the state? Yes. Should you mix religion and politics? And the truth is that where we are today as a nation, there's a, lim there's a level of political awareness, mm -hmm. I would say, um, to have in the church and in any religious institution, to be fair. However, in terms of campaigning and making promises, let people fear God. Yes. In fact, more than ever, you should be more, um, you, you know, lo looking at speaking facts and the truth, mm -hmm. especially if you're also a member of the government, you know, of the day. Of the it's day, important yes. to keep the, the pulpit or the platform is supposed to be neutral. 
everyone is supposed to be welcome and if anything is being said it ought to be truth it ought to be fact mm -hmm. now in terms of it's like saying that they'll win everybody are you a winner <laughs> I, everybody says that they're winners oh when they call yeah hope yeah. is there but i think it's important when um religious leaders give their platforms mm -hmm. to um gentlemen or ladies who come there it's important to ensure that what is being said is mm -hmm. truth is fact and it doesn't um it, it's not um inflammatory and mm -hmm. it's just sticking to the fact right. and not in any way campaign. Oh, sorry, I like that. I mean, in that space, he also talked about the fact that he believes in uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's uh, renewed hope agenda, and which is, you know, what a lot of the APC, uh, you know, <laughs> party members are saying at this point. Over the weekend, I have I had a guest on the show who was very adamant that is not, uh, you know, the uh, President Tinubu's administration that, um, you know, caused the hardship that, you know, Nigerians are facing at this time. But it is important. That's a lie. That President I, Tinubu's administration that caused the hardship. Well, well that is, that, that, that is, that is, well, that's what people, that's what the people, his camp, mm. the Tinubu support group will continue to say that. But, well, in the meantime, an old video showing the late MKO Abiola advocating for transparency in governance. During the 1993 presidential election has surfaced online, the late politician, who is regarded as a symbol of democracy in the video, said that he would demystify the sale of crude oil if he became president and rely on Nigerians and not the IMF or any foreign entity to keep Nigeria running. See, there are so many layers upon layers built on this simple thing, crude oil. I like don't even know where, where is oil or some mystery around it that is taking the money from the central bank. You see, I think we, we, we would demystify all these things. In my government, the, the daily export of crude will be published, and the price at which it is sold. You see, the issue of the, the, the issue of plan implementation is simple. You see. You see, public things are not private. We have National Assembly now. They will do their job. They review the expenditure of government and will hold public hearing. We will no longer be hearing of monetary circulars from, from Central Bank without the bankers being told. The bankers will have to be involved. You see, like I said, every effort has been made in the past to shave people's head in their absence. It must stop. I mean, it, 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 it won't be allowed. I mean, the cumulative wisdom of all the bankers would have seen us out of the problem we have in this country today. But some people, they, they, they come from IMF or they come from World Bank. What, what do they know about Nigeria? You see, you see the, most, the most brilliant doctor in, in Norway might not have seen malaria in his life. So bringing him here and imposing him as a medical director is like sending everybody to, to the grave. You see, I think all that nonsense will, will, will stop. I rely on Nigerians to keep Nigeria running efficiently. And that, that's what it is. You see, there will be a few foreigners who will be recommended by our people, not those who will be imposed by some foreign authorities over us. We are an independent republic under God, or aren't we? Late M.K. Abiola. May his soul continue to rest in peace. I mean, uh, Rufai, you know, you were trying to uh, talk about the fact that it is the current administration that has, you know, caused the hardship in the nation. But you heard the late M.K. Abiola there, you know, reiterating the same point that we have made on this program. I know that you have been an advocate mm. for that. The last time I brought a story like this, uh, Dr. Abati, it was Buhari saying that he wasn't going to listen to the IMF. And you were saying, are we so desperate now that we have to dig up old videos so that we can, you know, reshape our economy at this time. But yes, this is what we need right now. We need to continue to speak the truth, uh, Rufai. Bashan Rolemke, Abiola, Babanye, words are evergreen. Yeah. 30 years, exactly this problem. For the liars that are coming around to lie, President Tinubu himself has confirmed that he was the one that set this dynamo in place. He said... Quote me, that his advisors advised him not to remove subsidy. I've been so, but he felt he was bold. This same subsidy he has gone back to paying. The same IMF they used to call to bid them out. IMF is not telling them you are paying subsidy again. Mm. And the money has now increased. 
So anybody that comes here to lie and says no president Tinubu that caused the problem, you know it's a lie. They are facts. I deal with facts. I don't deal with sentiment and shout. Also, the attempt to be able to float the currency without having the fundamentals to defend the currency, plunge the currency where it is today. Mm. Didn't we advise that even if you are going to manage a float, borrow to have fundamentals to vote for it? MQ Abiola said the truth. The same scam has been going on in NMPC since was set up in the 70s. That we don't even know how much production goes on. The same NMPC came out to lie to Nigeria that are not paying subsidy again, but everybody's found them out. Didn't Rotus and I was saying this thing here four months ago and they started paying subsidy again? Is it not the same IMF that they call that? And this over attempt to run to IMF every time. We did it during Babangi that time. Why did he lead us? Look at the problems we created then. We created problems for ourselves because we squandered our riches. This was the same country. Yakubu Gowan said the problem is not money, but how to spend it in the 70s. Absolutely. This was the same country we gave Udoji Award, Wage Award, after the Jerome Udoji Committee met. That caused a lot of inflation in the 70s, and we first blamed the Ghanaians for our problem, not knowing that corruption was part of it. This was the same country of the cement Amada. This was the same country of the corruption that heralded first fact 77. So we did all of that. Mm -hmm. This was the same country that we had ministers feed fats in the Shagare regime. And they were giving three portions of land in VI and everything here. But we all know how all of that led us. It didn't lead us anywhere. This was the same country of essential commodity. So when we squander our riches, we have problems. As I when MQ Abela was talking 30 years ago, Dollar was not 1,000 no, to the Naira. It was still less than 100 or less than 50. It was when Abacha came in. We had the official rate of 22, but the unofficial rate was 80, 80 Naira. Right. So what MK Abela was saying that Nigerians can run this country. And when you need help, speak it out that you need help. President Tinubu has not been able to put a concrete policy direction as we speak since he got to government. Mm -hmm. All his policies have been babocious, babolojasi. Look at the student loan issue. Look at the humanitarian material. Today, we don't even know what's happening with better. Humanitarian means nobody's running it as we speak. If not replaced anything, everything is suspended. We've not seen a proper forensic audit. EFCC is still playing palungo. After EFCC will be telling us that uh, his investigators are collecting bribe. Mm -hmm. So we will we'll go solve, solve the problem with you. All right. Look at the food policy, the grain reserve that we are pushing out. Go and read Raziri Adio's article yesterday. Mm -hmm. How we broke it down. So no sense. Right. And we are deceiving ourselves. Dr. Bati, your take. Okay. Where should I start from? <laughs> Maybe I should start with uh, Wiki uh, speaking. Uh, at a Thanksgiving service at uh, Thai local government area in, the, in the River State over the weekend. And he is saying that it will be a walk in the park for them in 2027 and that his political camp, nobody can stop his political camp. And I think the person who responded was on point to say, which is the political camp <laughs> exactly? Is it the G5 or is it the PDP? Or is it the APC that he belongs to? Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, he was campaigning at that forum. Uh, a senator was having a Thanksgiving service mm -hmm. for President uh, Tinubu. And he was talking about unity, that APDP and APC together in the same uh, mm. event, and that they will work <laughs> together in uh, 2027. Now, I think this is why calls have been made to the PDP leadership. That look, you have many members of your party who are openly doing anti-party activities. Is it that there is no discipline in the party's constitution? Why is it that uh, the, uh, the PDP is afraid of calling to order and disciplining the likes of Ian uh, Wiki, who says he's still a member of the party, but in the last election, he openly campaigned for the APC at the federal level. He openly said the PDP would lose the election and the PDP did so. Mm. And yet, the man is saying he will remain in PDP <laughs> in an amphibious manner. Absolutely. Neither toad nor frog yeah. uh, in terms of uh, <laughs> politics. And, and I think it's presumptuous for anybody in 2024 to already be predicting the outcome 
of the 2027 general election. He's saying here, nobody can challenge us. They have not spent one year. The APC government is already being challenged. All the people who are doing a food protest, are they not challenging the yeah. government? All the people who are complaining about the economy, are they not challenging uh, 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 the, the, the government? So I, I think some of those assumptions are just, uh, you know, strange. But politicians, sometimes, you wonder whether they are talking with their feet or they are talking with their mouth or they are talking with uh, whatever other part of their anatomy. To the uh, second issue, MKO Abiola. MKO mm, is our man, man oh, SDP. In uh, 1993 uh, general election, you record that uh, Chief MKO Abiola ran a campaign called Hope 93. But as it turned out, that Hope 93 became Hope Deferred because of the annulment of the election of that year that was considered the freest mm. and fairest election in Nigeria's electoral history. And thus, Nigerians lost the opportunity to benefit from the message of hope that uh, uh, Bashonwe Mikuyu Abiola uh, preached. You know the rest of the story, how you know there was military repression Nigeria was uh, ostracized because at that time democracy was on trial. Absolutely. And Chief Emiko Abiola ended up as a matter of uh, democracy. Now we are talking about renewed hope. Yeah. Well, we will not know whether the present people will be able to renew the hope of Hope 93 because we didn't even get the opportunity to have an Abiola presidency. Because those that Honorable Paul Ohobamu, uh, who was our guest short, uh, earlier on, referred to as democracy assassins, assassinated mm -hmm. the hope of Nigerians in 1993. The points made by Chief M. Abiola, of course, are still relevant. He was talking about opaqueness in the NMPC and how it will ensure uh, transparency. transparency yeah. the same, uh, we were discussing capital importation this morning. The same oil and gas sector is not doing well with regard to capital imp uh, uh, importation. People are not investing. In the oil and gas sector, instead, they are, they are reviewing their investment, moving from onshore to offshore because of problems within that uh, sector. He talked about listening to IMF and uh, uh, outsiders who have this one-size-fits-all uh, pattern. And he says it's Nigerians that can develop Nigeria. I think Chivem Abiola was absolutely right. Absolutely. But today, no. we are discussing the same thing. Yes. To draw your attention to what uh, Professor Walusho Inka calls the mobile strip, which he defines as a repetitive cycle of stupidity. The same problems we were dealing with over 30 years ago. We are dealing with the same yeah, problems absolutely. today. Mk Abiola was talking about uh, uh, not uh, uh, just rely on IMF prescriptions and uh, mm -hmm. foreigners, parachute economies, mm -hmm. as they are otherwise uh, called. Yes. You know, but uh, we should look inwards and do our thing yes. ourselves. In 2024, CBI Governor Cardoso is telling us IMF has seen it. <laughs> yes, uh, Fitch rating has, has seen it. He has seen the light. There's what, hope. <laughs> all these outsiders that uh, NKO was talking about. Yes. They, they say they see things in yeah. 2024. Nigerians are saying they can't see it. Yes, absolutely. I, I don't know whether Nigerians are being described as blind people. No, they that, are not. That they can't see what IMF is saying. <laughs> <laughs> but they can see that uh, the cost of groceries yes. has gone up. Absolutely. As uh, Rufai and uh, Rufai yes. were, were comparing notes. Oh, really? You know okay. this elite, uh, go and buy uh, no, I mean, grocery this... in top shops. Nigeria has to fix up. We have to fix it. We are not blind, absolutely. <laughs> I want to pull up a picture of the day. And I would like for you to even just try to, you know, analyze this picture. It shows, if we can pull it up, it shows, you know, Nigerians, <laughs> hungry children <laughs> surrounding <laughs> this beautiful uh, mercy. Is that a Maybach? Obviously, yeah, that's Maybach. one of that's the, um, what do you call it? One of those. Uh, uh, Why is the I, president I like not driving Indosong? The... No song? Uh, exactly. Why is the president of that's Nigeria? Not, this, this is the not is AI generated. It's not. I mean, this is a. a this looks it, like an AI generated. It, it's the picture of the day. It was yeah. trending and depicting it's an Nigeria's yes. economic Why hardship at this nation. Why is the president not driving Indosong? Which is not which is, or other which is, Nigerian manufacturers. Which is, which is, which is the so, president of Nigeria driving Jaman Car? That's the problem. Well, talk about that. That picture. If we can pull up that picture, evoke something deep. Yes. In all of us, because. 
even if it's AI generated, yeah. it is a representation mm -hmm. of our reality. Absolutely. And we had something similar actually happen when the president was in Lagos State and there were people around shouting a beam power. In yes. fact, that hashtag is trending since that time. The people are suffering. Mm -hmm. People are dying of hunger. People, young, old, not just children. Mm -hmm. Yet, we see the elite. And that's why I said last week that even though they say that, oh, Nigeria is not poor, Nigeria is poor, it's difficult to argue that because we see the elite living as if nothing is happening. Yes. Look at their parts, their weddings, their events, the cost of governance. And it belies the fact that there are people who cannot go to bed with food in their stomach. This is it this. is very sad and we need to address that Absolutely. before there's anarchy in the, in the country. Well said, Ayo. Well, in the same vein, many Nigerians have reacted to a viral video of a schoolboy, Abdul Kaber Abdul Kadiri, from Kazim Primary School, who in a video that has now gone viral, criticized the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu over the economic hardship facing the nation. In the video, Abdul Kaber was debating with his fellow students on the issue of mandatory voting. Well, let's take a listen. My name is Abdul Kabir Abdul Kadir from Kasim Primary School, Agha. Strongly standing here before you to oppose the motion, which says voting should be mandatory. Firstly, the use of force in a democratic setting is unconstitutional. Forcing people to vote undermines democracy itself. Hence, democracy is built on the ideas of freedom of choice. People should be free to choose who to lead them. Having said that, consider the kind of politician we have in this country. And our politics is being practiced. Who and who are we making voting mandatory for? Just every last year, we voted to be our next president. But I know that this will change for better. Opposing him, the first bit of color he gave us was remove the petroleum subsidy, throwing the whole nation who took in Obia into untold hardship. Prices of goods and services continue to rise. Tinubu, with all his charisma, cannot handle this country the way we want. Presently, we are expressing the capital of the merits. And as all this are happening, our lawmakers all have the constitutional power to call everybody to order, including President Deptinot. Particularly the Senate instant, they are busy by getting for 160 million naira flashes cars. Housing allowances, it is for God's sake. Is this the kind of our leaders who want to make voting men that true for? Brilliant young boy. I mean, when I saw the video, I had to watch it more than once. And I was taken aback because, you know, I wasn't so sure why the school allowed the boy to not, you know, maybe they should have read his script. Because Thunder was trending on social media over the weekend because he made some, you know, inflammatory statements and saying that, you know, uh, the... Uh, the leaders should crash in the plane and thunder should strike uh, them. Wrong. And that act actually is wrong. That's wrong. Uh, besides that, he, you know, he was brilliant in his delivery. Let me take one tweet from uh, Dr. Yakubu. He wrote, at this age, whoever wrote the script for him isn't helping the boy. He will grow as a rebel. A primary school boy shouldn't be trained to call his leaders thieves and so on. The use of thunder and the likes is utterly unbecoming. I understand the instructors could be using the medium to unleash what's in their mind due to the pervasive hunger in the land. However, it is still wrong to use the boy as a scapegoat. I mean, this young boy should not be used as a scapegoat, but he did amazing. And he really just hit the nail head with everything he said in that video. I encourage people to watch it. But the use of those yeah. curse words, I do not support and it should not be promoted at all at all let children be children yes children are aware of things even more than we give them credit for it was yeah. obvious we all did debate when we were younger yes. you know how you would cram the scripts and then come up and just regurgitate but it's important <coughs> that we also preserve the innocence of children yes. even though we are, we are trying to protest so please let's not raise children who are growing up with hate and this is how sometimes young children are radicalized when you're giving strong views and opinions that belong to adults and allowed to present those facts it's very wrong please mm -hmm. let's preserve the innocence of children even though they are very aware of what's going on they can feel it mm -hmm. in their life you know see their yes. parents struggling see themselves going yes. to bed hungry but yes. please yes. preserve the innocence of children yes. at this time All right. I have Dr. a slightly uh, different opinion about what uh, Dr. Yakubu said mm -hmm. that's the gentleman who said oh this boy will grow up to become a rebel how is he so sure mm -hmm. however rebellion is good for society I mean, some of the major developments in uh, human history have come about as a result of rebellion. How about Camus wrote a novel, uh, well, a 1951 book-length essay, 
titled The Rebel. Mm -hmm. And it's about the value of rebellion. Some of the major developments in, in society have been as a result of the fact that people moved away from orthodoxy and said society must change. And if we have young people who already have the consciousness that certain things are wrong with Nigeria yes. and that Nigeria must make progress, I don't see a problem with that. Mm -hmm. After all, when we are teaching other things, we say catch them young, yes. conscientize them early. Yes. All right. Well, all right. I don't think we have uh, enough time to uh, take our last story. It was about uh, the River State Governor honoring our great, great uh, chief. chief. He's not a chief. Yes. chief. Oh, Stanley. fantastic. Stanley Ngwabali. Yes. Gave him uh, 20 million naira yes. as well as it's amazing. Well, Odogu. congratulations to him, Odogu. Odogu. <laughs> well, all right. I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.